Hi, Facebook, Facebook Live folks. I'm Dr. Stephen Mandel from Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles. I'm an anesthesiologist. I've been in the private practice of anesthesia for many years, and I've been using ketamine, which is the world's most frequently used anesthetic, for over 45 years. But four years ago, I started using ketamine in a totally different way, not as an anesthetic, but as a treatment for mood disorders and suicidality and for chronic pain. Today, we're gonna to focus mostly on ketamine for suicide and for chronic pain, and again, for depression. It's an amazing drug for suicidality. It actually relieves suicidality in minutes to hours. Even those people who do not have a lifting of their depression have a relief from their suicidal thinking. And if I might chime in really quickly, Dr. Mandela, and everyone who can't see me behind the, the camera here, my name is Sam and I'm the operations officer for the clinic and I'm going to be with you guys as well so I can read your questions. So if you have any questions, definitely please leave them in the comments so Dr. Mandela can address them. And we are going to be doing this every Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, for 10 minutes. And uh, we're really excited that uh, today is the first time we're doing this. And, and thanks uh, very much for making the time, Dr. Mandel. I'm really glad to do it. This is a, a remarkable therapy, and I want to get the word out. Uh, ketamine has been used uh, in a variety of ways, in a variety of contexts, and has gotten a very varied reputation. I'm talking about the therapeutic use of ketamine for people with mood disorders. It's remarkable. It lifts depression. It gets rid of suicidal thinking. In hours to days, ketamine was discovered to do this in the most difficult patients, namely those with PTSD and serious depression from problems in their youth, from trauma, from the ravages of war. And it was just serendipitously discovered among returning service people who were having surgeries and had ketamine for anesthesia. And a smart doc noticed that these people not only had a reasonably good anesthetic, but they had a lifting of their depression, that they were no longer so hypervigilant, that they didn't have the nightmares, that they didn't have such a short fuse, that they were relaxed and able to interact better with others. And the patients themselves noticed it too. It was really remarkable. This led to more and more curiosity. Finally, some studies were done in 2006 at the National Institute of Mental Health. Carlos Cerati demonstrated that ketamine would relieve depression in modest doses, doses that did not put people to sleep. First, we thought that it would only last a short time, but when it's given repeatedly, four, five, six infusions over one to two weeks, ketamine has the power to relieve depression for many months or even longer. It re relieves the depression and the suicidality very quickly. And it also gives even the average patient three or four months, during which time people can adopt lifestyle changes that will make its benefit last even longer. So if I could chime in really quickly, you know, ketamine, uh for those who don't really know a lot about it, uh, is based on everything that you're saying, a pretty remarkable treatment. And if you could speak a little bit about what exactly ketamine is and perhaps what ketamine therapy itself is, I think that might be helpful for some people. Sure, thank you, Sam. Ketamine is an anesthetic, as I say. It's a liquid that's given into a vein to affect anesthetic. And as a mood disorder drug, it's given into a vein in smaller amounts continuously via a pump. This enables the doctor to achieve just the right level to help to relieve the depression. Ketamine acts in the brain on uh, glutamate receptors and on AMPA receptors. And it's now thought that it's the AMPA system that is most responsible for ketamine's good effects on mood. Although some people still believe it's the glutamate system. Whichever system it is, ketamine actually stimulates new growth in the brain. You actually 
mediated by brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF. Ketamine actually produces or stimulates the production of BDNF, which stimulates new growth in certain areas of the brain that are responsible for mood and for attention. So ketamine, when it's effective, makes people better able to concentrate, more able to be active around what they're thinking of doing. They get into action more quickly. They get more pleasure from what they're doing and they're more interested in others and in interacting with others. It really increases their pleasure quotient. Food starts to taste better. Music starts to sound better. A hug starts to feel better. They quickly increase the rhythms in which they move in life, accomplishing much more, much more quickly and with much greater satisfaction. Their self-deprecation, their low self-esteem, and their isolation or tendency to isolate all are modified in the direction of better ability to socialize and less wish to isolate. Now what about people who have tried a lot of other treatments um, including many different prescription medications like SSRIs, you know, SNRIs and other conventional medications or even other treatments um, who haven't benefited. Is it um, likely that they will or will not benefit from ketamine infusion therapy? It's not possible to predict who will benefit. But all of our patients, until very recently, came from the ranks of those for whom everything else had failed. This was a new treatment just a few years ago. Nobody had ketamine for mood disorders who hadn't already tried the SSRIs, the SNRIs, the atypicals, the antipsychotics, all of the psychiatric medications. Many of them had also tried TMS, and many of them had even tried electroconvulsive therapy, ETC. So these were people who were as they say, treatment resistant. We don't mean the people were resisting, but their affliction was resisting our interventions. So it's among this group that we first tried ketamine. And despite their, those treatments failing, these conventional treatments failing for all of them, the ketamine worked for, in the literature, 71% of them, in our clinic for 83% of them. So it's very remarkably effective, even among those who have not benefited from more conventional treatments. Nowadays, it seems foolish to me to go to these more conventional treatments since ketamine works more quickly and works in a higher percentage of patients and has fewer adverse side effects. I don't think people should have to wait to be not well served by conventional treatments. I think they should come, if they have major depressive disorder, if they have bipolarity, they should come and try ketamine. If they are suicidal, they especially should come and try ketamine. It can really relieve them quickly and safely. Ketamine has no adverse long-term side effects. That cannot be said for any of these other medications or interventions. Wow, absolutely. And that's our 10 minutes today, Dr. Mandela. Is there anything that you wanted to say in closing? I'm reaching out to you folks because I really want people to let others know. Depression is the major cause, the most prominent cause of disability in our country. It also leads to suicide. We have over 120 suicides every single day in this country. I want people to know about this before they hurt themselves, before they go on miserable. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your commitment to, uh, to this population that really needs uh, so much right now, Dr. Mandel. And uh, for everyone listening, we're going to be doing this next week at 3 p.m. and every Friday at 3 p.m. for at least 10 minutes. Really happy to take any of your questions. And thank you so much for everyone who tuned in today. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Thank you, Sam. Bye-bye.